The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions to say. Their favorite margarine is... P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> When the average man becomes engaged, it's usually to just one woman. But leave it to the great Gildersleeve to be a little different. He now finds himself betrothed to two women, his new sweetheart, Adeline Fairchild, and his old flame, Leela Ransom. At the moment, he's discussing his predicament with the new member of the family, the baby. What am I going to do, baby? I can't marry both of them. If you were in a situation like this, what would you do? Oh, thanks. You're a big help. How do I get into these things? What are you laughing at? The only reason I got into this marriage business is because I saw I could adopt you. You know, baby, you've caused me a lot of trouble since I found you in that parking lot. <laughs> Oh, yes, but you're worth it, baby. Well, I have to make up my mind pretty soon. I've been stalling them both for a week now. I'm getting a little impatient. But which one do I want to marry? Adeline's sweet, but so is Leela. Leela's awfully cute, but so is Adeline. <sighs> right back where I started. Just have to stall them a little longer. Well, better get down to the office. See you tonight, baby. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Guess I'll go out the back way. Oh, Mr. Gilsley. Yeah, I'm going to work now, Bertie. You better watch the baby. Yes, sir, I will. Hope I can get the car out without Leela and Adeline seeing me. <laughs> you poor man. Haven't you made up your mind yet, Mr. Gilsley? Uh, no, I haven't, Bertie. My goodness, it's bad enough being engaged to two women without having them both live in the same house right next door. Yes, well. Yes, sir, Mr. Gillsley, you're trapped. <laughs> Bertie, shh, not so loud. I'm trying to get out without them hearing me. Oh, I get it. Goodbye, Bertie. Goodbye, Mr. Gillsley. Good luck. Well... Shades are still down next door. Guess they're still asleep. I'll just sneak by their window. <laughs> Made it. I'll open the garage door real easy. Oh, my goodness. Must have oiled that someday. Well, so far, so good. Back out real quiet. Looks like I'm going to make it. Ta-ta, girls. <laughs> Have to wake up pretty early in the morning to catch Gildersleeve. Oh, they're shooting at me. <laughs> oh, uh, a blowout. <laughs> that you, Brockmorton? Oh, uh, hello, Adeline. You, Brockmorton? You, Leela. Good morning, girls. <laughs> Sorry I woke you up. Just had a little blowout. Old retread. <laughs> Goodbye. You do? What about? You know very well what about. You've been dodging me for days now. I want to ask you a personal question. Just a moment. I won't ask Throckmorton a question. Uh, girls? Pardon me, Cousin Leela. I'm talking to Throckmorton. Well, excuse me, Cousin Adeline. I'm talking to Throckmorton. 
Don't fight, girl. Well, I happen to be engaged to him. Well, I happen to be engaged to him, too. Of course, you're both engaged to me. I mean... Do you intend to marry your Adeline or not? Marry you, Adeline? Why, certainly. That's a very interesting question. Well, got to go to work. <laughs> you come back here. I want an answer right now. So do I. We're going to settle this. You ain't fast, Rock Lord, and I'm coming right down. I'm coming down, too. We're going to have a long talk. That's what they think. They'll have to catch me first. <laughs> oh, good morning, Peavy. <laughs> My, you seem a little out of breath. Yes, I uh, decided to run to work this morning. <laughs> well, some people say it's much healthier to run than to walk. Certainly was this morning. <laughs> By the way, Mr. Gildersleeve, how are your two fiancés? What? Oh, uh, they're fine. Have you decided yet which one is to be the future, Mrs. Gildersleeve? No, I haven't, Peavy. I just can't make up my mind. Well, I've been giving your problem quite a bit of thought. You have? Yes, and I've come to one conclusion. What's that? You're in an awful mess. You... <laughs> well, you're certainly a big help, Peavy. A fine friend you are. Now's the time I really need some advice. Well, I was in a similar predicament when I was young. You might benefit by my experience. Peavy, don't tell me you were engaged to two women. No, not exactly. But while I was betrothed to Mrs. Peavy, another woman came into my life. Really? <laughs> I hope to tell you. Well, I'm... Who was this other woman? Well, her name was Fifi Latour. She was an actress. Huh? And she was crazy about me. You don't say. Yes, I do say. She was a soubrette in the road company at the Red Mill. She came out in the second act in black tights. And she sang that song, Just... Because you're you, dear. Just be Okay, PB. How do you know she was crazy about you? Well, right in the middle of the song, she leaned over the footlights and winked in my direction. Oh, for heaven's sake. Is that all? I couldn't sleep all that night. I knew it was either Miss Latour or the future Mrs. Peavy. So the next day I went back to the theater, and what do you think? What? The show had left town and gone to P.I. Oh, <laughs> But I'll never forget her singing that song. Just because you're you, dear. Peavy. Just because you're you. Peavy. And then she winked at me. And the darn fool sitting next to me thought she was winking at him. <laughs> Ye gods, I should have known better than to come to you for advice. You're just married to one woman. You don't have any problems. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Oh! That you, Unky? I don't know. It's about time you got home. I was getting worried about you. Worried, Marjorie? I phoned you that I was having dinner downtown. And I decided to go to a movie. Just felt like being alone. Oh, I see. What picture did you see, Unky? Picture? I don't know. I guess I didn't notice. Oh. Well, the phone's been ringing all evening. Oh, it has? First Mrs. Ransom called, and then Miss Fairchild, and then, then Mrs. Mrs. Ransom, Ransom called. And, and they both left messages for you to call them back. Thank you, my dear. Well, I'll call them sometime. Next month, maybe. Poor Unky. You're really in trouble this time, aren't you? Well, sort of. Uncle Mort, you'll have to face them sometime. Haven't you decided yet which one you want to marry? No, but I'm working on it. You know, you remind me of the character in this play I'm studying. Who's that? Hamlet. Who? He couldn't make up his mind either. He wouldn't marry Ophelia, and then everybody thought he was crazy. He wasn't so crazy. Hi, huh? Leroy. It's almost 10 o'clock. Why aren't you in bed? I was waiting up for the latest news flash. Have you decided who you're going to marry yet, Uncle? No, I haven't. Gee, I wish you'd hurry up. The suspense is killing me. Leroy, I will decide this in my own good time. Well, if you can't make up your mind, why don't you flip a coin? This is a serious matter, young man. Flip a coin. That's ridiculous. Don't mind Leroy, Uncle Mort. I understand. 
It isn't easy to decide something important like this. That's right, my dear. It takes a lot of thought. I'm the cautious type. That's why I haven't made many mistakes where women are concerned. <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> I don't want to hear another word about this. Well, you've got to make up your mind. What Leroy, you... go to bed. Okay, good night. I think I'll go too, Wonky. Good night. And don't worry. Yeah, I won't. Good night, my dear. Uh, uh, wish I could stop worrying. I'll have to work this out some way. But how? Maybe I could flip a coin. No, that's a coward's way out. Now, let's see. When you pick a wife, you have to think about the future, too. Now, who'll be the best companion in later life? Now, just suppose I married Adeline. She's the stay-at-home type. I can just see us. Thirty years from now, we'd be sitting by the fireside after dinner. Rock Morton? Yes, Adeline? Isn't this nice, just sitting here together? Yes, it is. I'm a little tired tonight. Oh, no, darling. You work so hard down at that water department. Would you like to go to a movie tonight, dear? No, let's just stay home. And tomorrow we'll go visit Leroy and his wife. And Leroy Jr. <laughs> All right. I declare the little boy looks just like Leroy. Yes, he does. Poor kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> We've had a wonderful 30 years, Adeline. Our children grown up and married. We have our health and our friends. And Truman's still president. Yes, Rockmorton, we've been happy. It's been wonderful. Yep. Guess I'd be pretty happy with Adeline, all right? Oh, I wonder about Leela. She's sort of a gadabout. Likes a good time. Wonder how we'd be 30 years from now. Shock, my Orton. Yes, Leela? Are we staying home tonight? Well, darling, I'm a little tired. Why don't we just stay here and watch the movies on the television? Now, I'm tired of television movies. Every night, the same thing. Hop along, Cassidy. <laughs> I want to go dancing and have fun. We went to a dance last night. Yes, and you just sat in the corner. Judge Hooker danced with me all evening. Yes, but today the old goat can't get out of his wheelchair. <laughs> oh, come on, Throckmorton. Well, all right, Leela. Help me up. Oh, oh, oh my back. Oh, for 30 years, nothing but dances and parties. Why didn't I marry Adeline? That's it. Adeline's the one, all right. My worries are over. But wait a minute. How do I get rid of Leela? That fella Hamlet thought he had worries. The piker. <laughs> You know, Pa came... Oh, hello, Bertie. Oh, hello, Mr. Wall. That Leroy. What's the matter, Bertie? That boy says I'm always saying what I'm saying. You're always saying? About parquet margarine, Mr. Wall. Oh, you mean about what a grand flavor parquet has and things like that. And how it's just as nutritious as the most costly spreads, even though it costs about half as much. That Leroy... He don't like talking, but he sure likes tasting. Well, we probably all do a lot of talking about how parquet is like a rare luxury food. After all, parquet is prepared like a luxury from selected products of American farms. And it tastes like a luxury. We all know it has that wonderful, sweet, light flavor, whether you spread it on waffles or biscuits, pancakes or bread. That ain't what Leroy says I'm always saying. Well, what are you always saying, Bertie? Tastes like it should cost twice as much. Well, that's just the plain truth. What's the matter with saying it? That's what I'm saying. Well, let's say something to our audience, Bertie. Friends, try parquet. 
See if you don't find that you agree with Bertie, that it tastes like it should cost twice as much. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, the great Gildersleeve has finally made up his mind he wants to marry Adeline. But there's one catch in his matrimonial plans. He still has to break his engagement to Leela. There's only one thing to do in a case like that, and that's see a lawyer. Well, Gildy, I must say, this is a very interesting situation. Yes, yes, but how do I get out of it, Judge? Well, let's review the case. You've gotten yourself engaged to two women. I don't need a lawyer to tell me that. Not only that, you became engaged to them at the same time. All right, Hooker, what does that prove? Proves you're the biggest boob in Summerfield. <laughs> now look here, you old goat. There's nothing funny about this. I'm in serious trouble. And since you're an alleged lawyer, I thought you might... All right, all right, my fat friend. Since you got yourself into this, I suppose I'll have to help you out. Okay, start helping me. Well, there are two ways to handle this. One way would be for you to be a man about it and simply go to Leela and tell her you've decided not to marry her. Uh, what's the other way? Or you might persuade her to break the engagement. What? Leela never do that. Well, there's more than one way to skin a cat, you know. What do you mean? Well, suppose you were to get Leela interested in another man. Then she might break her engagement to you. I don't know, Judge. Who could we get? Well, it should be a man who's younger and handsomer than you. Of course, that shouldn't be difficult. <laughs> I would suggest myself, but I'm afraid I can't spare the time. Oh, that's too bad. Say, what about that young bank teller? Who's that? You know, Barney Caldwell. Barney? Leela used to go out with him when you and she were spatty. That's right, Judge. She did kind of like Barney. He has all the necessary qualifications. Young, looks like a collar ad. It might work. By George Hooker, you're all right. Yes, sir, you've got something under your hat besides hair. Well, I guess my upper story is occupied all right. <laughs> Certainly is, old friend. Well, see you later, Judge. I've got a little business to attend to at the bank. <laughs> Yeah, glad I got here early. No crowd yet. Wonder what window Barney works at. Let me see. New accounts, loans. Ah, oh, there he is. At that teller window over there. Oh, well, this won't take long. Just one woman ahead of me. <laughs> Barney looks like a collar ad, all right. Look at those eyelashes. Well, I'll act like I just dropped in. <laughs> You're sly, Gildersleeve. 35, 40, 45, 50 dollars, and, uh, 53 cents. There you are, Miss Scott. That makes it. Thank you. Not at all. <laughs> well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Barney. Haven't seen you for a long time. No, that's right. Just happened to be passing by. Thought I'd drop in and transact a little business. Uh oh. Well, I thought you banked over at the Farmers and Merchants. Well, I do, Barney, but there's no reason why I can't give you a little of my business. Oh, thanks. What can I do for you? Well, I wonder if you'd give me a dollar's worth of nickels. <laughs> Why, uh, of course. <laughs> a little short of nickels at my bank this morning. <laughs> Guess everybody's making phone calls. <laughs> I see. Well, uh, there you are. Thank you very much, Barney. Uh, nice to see you again, Barney. Uh, thank you. Uh, we ought to get together sometime. Well... All right. And Barney, an old friend of yours is back in town. Who's that? Leela Ransom. Oh, she is? Yeah. And there's a certain person she'd like to see. Guess who? Who? A handsome young bank teller. But, Mr. Gildersleeve, I thought Leela was sort of interested in you. Me? No. <laughs> oh, Leela but... like me? That's ridiculous. Uh, she'd naturally prefer a man like you. You're younger than I am. You're better looking. I... I guess you're right. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Well, Leela's staying with her cousin right next door to me. Why don't we uh, drop over and see him sometime? All right, Mr. Gildersleeve. Sometime real soon. Well? How about tonight? Tonight? 
Well, I suppose I... Could. Good. You come by my house about eight, and we'll go over and see the girls together. Goodbye. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes? You forgot your nickels. Nickels? Oh, yes. Thank you. See you tonight. <laughs> nickels. <laughs> get together. <laughs> yes. Aren't you going to invite us in, Leela? Well, of course. Come right in. Uh, thank you. After you, Barney. It's rock, Morton. Where have you been hiding? I want to talk to you. Some other time, Leela can't talk in front of company. <laughs> uh, where's Adeline? Oh, she'll be down in a minute. Uh, uh, sit down, Barney. And, uh, Frock Martin, you can sit here with me on the sofa. Uh, no, I think Barney, Barney ought to sit next to you. Well, after all, Leela, he's a guest. <laughs> Go on, Barney. Well, all right. That's a boy. I'll just sit over here in this big chair. <sighs> My, you look beautiful tonight, Leela. Why, thank you, sir. Don't you think she looks beautiful, Barney? I, yes, I do. Yes, sir. And you look mighty handsome yourself, Barney. In that gray herringbone suit? Well, thanks. Don't you think Barney looks handsome tonight, Leela? Indeed I do. <laughs> In fact, you make a very handsome couple. Rock Martin, what's gotten into you tonight? Me? Why, nothing. What makes you ask that? Well, it seems to me that well, you... Well, it's nice of you to call, Rock Martin. Oh, uh, hello, Adeline. Oh, mercy. I didn't know we had company. Uh, Cousin Adeline, may I present Mr. Barney Coldwell? Uh, Barney, this is my older cousin, Adeline Fairchild. How do you do? Uh, pleased to meet you. Uh, Barney's sort of an old friend of Leela's. <laughs> For Cousin Leela, how on earth did you ever get such an attractive friend? Uh, <clears throat> Adeline, want to come over and sit down by me? Uh, can take my place next to Barney. No. I mean, Leela, where'll you sit? What's rock, Morton, darling? I'll just come right over and plump myself down on the arm of your chair. But... Yeah. Mm. Now, isn't that cozy? Uh, yeah. Well, Mr. Caldwell, I believe I will sit down by you. Of course, Miss Fairchild. Why don't you just call me Adeline? <laughs> All right. And you call me Barney. All right. Barney. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Throckmorton, darling? Aren't you comfortable? Oh, I do oh, yes. Very comfortable, Leela. Um, Adeline... What line of work are you in, Barney? Well, I'm connected with the Summerfield First National... Oh, a banker. Well, I'm just a teller at present. Uh, Adeline. Rock Martin, now you just pay attention to your Leela. You haven't said boo to me. Oh? Well, boo. <laughs> uh, Adeline. Barney, I'll bet it won't be long before you work yourself right up to vice president. Well, I am trying to advance myself. Mm -hmm. uh, right now I'm taking a correspondence course in first and second mortgages. Oh, why, that's wonderful. I've always wanted to know about first and second mortgages. You have? Uh-huh. Well, I'd be glad to explain them to you. Adeline, Leela, get your head out of the way. <laughs> Adeline, Barney, I just had a wonderful idea. Let's all go to a movie. Oh, that's a wonderful idea, Throckmorton. Sure, we'll all go. Leela and Barney and Adeline and me. Well, I'd rather just stay at home and hear about first and second mortgages. Yep. That is, if Barney doesn't mind. But Adeline... Mind? Why, I'd be delighted. You don't often find a girl that's interested in the banking game. But Barney... I know. Why don't you and Cousin Leela run along to a movie without us? Oh, what a marvelous idea. Come on, Throckmorton. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, I'm sure you'd like to be alone with Leela Throckmorton. After all, you two are engaged. Mr. Gildersleeve, you're engaged to Leela? Well, uh, sort of. Well, congratulations. Well, you two lovebirds just run along. 
Adeline and I will stay here. But I'm engaged to Adeline, too. What? Well, not anymore. You're not, Throckmorton. Huh? You can just stay engaged to that girl that's practically sitting on your lap. But, but Adeline... Come on, Throckmorton. <laughs> Uh, what movie do you want to see, Leela? Oh, I don't want to see any movies, Throckmorton. What? I just wanted to get you alone where we could talk. No, Leela. Throckmorton, there's something I wanted to tell you. What's that? Our engagement is off. Off? You don't want to marry little Leela? Cousin Adeline's the girl of your choice. Why, it's as plain as the nose on your face. Well, I... Yes, yes, poor Leela knows she's lost you. So, I'll just make a little curtsy and gracefully step aside. After all, we're old friends, Throckmorton. And it's your happiness that counts. So I'm leaving town. You are? Gosh, Leela, you're true blue. And Throckmorton... Yes? I have a teensy-weensy confession to make. What's that? Well, all the time I was engaged to you, I was sort of promised to somebody else, too. <laughs> you were? Who? Wildcat Hathaway. He's been down in Texas looking for oil. Oh? Mm, I got a wire from him today. One of his wells came in. <laughs> Going back to him. He needs me. <laughs> sure, Leela, you just go right ahead. And Throck, my heart, and I hope you find every happiness with Cousin Adeline. Thanks, Leela. I'm sure we. Wait a minute. Adeline's back there with that collar ad. See you later, Leela. Adeline! Adeline, turn up those lights! <laughs> Now, more names of winners in Parquet's $50,000 baby naming contest. Here are the four entrants who won 1949 four-door Ford sedans in the fourth week's contest. I want to hear this. Mrs. Willie Lou Taylor of St. Louis, Missouri. Mrs. Buford W. Tucker of Donaldson, Tennessee. Mrs. Rudy Blaha, Jr. of Los Angeles, California. Mrs. A.N. Prestoff of Westfield, New Jersey. Great. Our congratulations and best wishes to the four of you and to the 140 other prize winners who will be notified by mail. We hope that all of you will continue to use Parquet, the margarine that tastes like it should cost twice as much. That's Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, I guess I'll let you down, baby. Yeah, yes, I did. Adeline wouldn't even talk to me last night. And now I've lost her. How am I going to adopt you if I don't... Oh, Throckmorton. Adeline. How's my cute little old husband-to-be? Husband-to-be? Mm -hmm. But Adeline, I thought our engagement was off. Oh, I was just pretending, lover boy. It never hurts to make a man jealous. But I thought you and Barney, he's so handsome. I don't want a handsome man, Throckmorton. <laughs> I just want you. Y yeah. You do? You hear that, baby? I'm engaged again. <laughs> That's what I think, too. Good night, folks. The Great Gilded Sleeve is played by Harold Perry, Adeline by Miss Una Merkel, and Leela by Shirley Mitchell. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gilded Sleeve. Now, just in time for Thanksgiving feasting, Kraft has plenty of aged natural American for you. Since before the war, the demand for cheese has been so great that it's been difficult to set aside enough to send to the curing rooms. But for the last year, Kraft has been selecting fine golden wheels, guarding them for months while they develop that mellow goodness that comes only from aging. So now, Kraft has plenty of aged natural American, and it's waiting for you at your dealer's. Tomorrow, ask him for a big wedge of aged natural American, the Kraft kind.